Number 5 district, the largest in the Belfast Parade, was formed in 1864 at Sandy Row Orange Hall, on the ground where William's soldiers camped on their way to the Boyne. The grandfather of the district, some veteran Sammy Lavery, at 94, took a seat in the van for the trip to the field. Each year, the district honours its members who were lost at the Somme, and in 1991 will be making a special trip there for the 75th anniversary. Most of the lodges have close associations with industry, churches, the services, or local interests. There's a naval lodge, for example, and a postman's lodge. Kane Memorial has a lot of Linfield supporters, which is rumoured to be why they favour the blue collarettes. And there's the loyal sons of Donegal, Belfast-based orange men whose fathers or grandfathers were Donegal men. They also attend the annual Donegal demonstration, which was held in Ross Nyla last week. A ten-minute rest was called halfway through the parade, but to the delight of the crowds, some of the bands just couldn't stop playing. of LOL 1934 in number 6 district was the youngest worshipful master ever in the Grand Lodge when he took office last year at the ripe old age of 21. His lodge along with 1310 laid wreaths today at the Royal Avenue security gates where two of their members died in an explosion while on duty with the UDR. It was hard to tell if it was the bands or the onlookers who provided the most colour today as the Belfast Parade wound its way to the field. Well, out of Belfast now, crowds estimated at 15,000 have attended the County for Manor demonstration. They included a big number of lodges and bands from border counties in the Republic who received a special welcome. Cyril Troy now reports from Fermanagh. The lovely village of Brookborough, which is hosting the county demonstration for the first time in nine years, has really put on its finest regalia for the big day, with flags and bunting everywhere. The normal resident population of the village is only about 400. Today there will be about 15,000 people here as marchers and visitors throng in from far and near. And here's the moment the crowds have all been waiting for as the big procession starts on its way through the village to the demonstration field on the Belfast Road. The office bearers of the County Grand Lodge lead the way and following behind are close on 100 lodges and almost as many bands. And there's a new look about the county leaders as both the Grand Master Eddie Elliott and his deputy Bill Morrison are celebrating their first twelfth in those offices, though each has a wealth of experience in both the order and local affairs. Eddie's an Orangeman for 50 years, a deputy Grand Master of Ireland, and was deputy county Grand Master for 20 years. He's also a former chairman of Enniskillen Rural Council, who served on the county council and later for Manna District Council. And Bill Morrison, a local headmaster who serves in a number of educational bodies, is district master of Listen Ski District, as well as being the county's number two. Bill Morrison is also one of the Grand Lodge Educational Committee, who have just published a booklet about the battles between Williamites and Jacobites 300 years ago, and which had more significance than many people realise. The Enniskillen men, as the booklet is called, were crucial to the overall triumph of William of Orange. They also were the foundation of two British Army regiments, the Royal Enniskillen Dragoon Guards and the Royal Enniskillen Fusiliers. The 15 district lodges of Fermanagh take it in turn to head each year's procession, but all of them concede pride of place in the entire march to their friends from across the border. Here now are the lodges and bands from Monaghan, Cavan, Leitrim and Donegal. Brethren on parade today will be remembering an outstanding figure in world orangeism, Colonel George Little, on the first anniversary of his death. Yes, Colonel Little, who was County Grand Master of Fermanagh for many years, died on the twelfth day last year, but because he was staying with his daughter in England, his passing was not known until later, and so this is the first opportunity to pay tribute to the great man from a twelfth platform. 
The colonel, as well as being a top figure in the Orange Order, was a former deputy lieutenant for Fermanagh and a former county commandant of the Ulster Special Constabulary, a force he helped to found along with Sir Basil Brook. His portrait is featured on a new banner on parade today. It was unfurled a fortnight ago for Lisbon Law LOL 315, one of two new banners in Lisbon Law District No. 2. This now is the biggest of all the districts in Fermanagh. It's number five, and there are no prizes for guessing that it's centered on Inniskillen itself. Number five has 17 lodges, and by the way, this is their second parade today. They already walked the town before setting out for Brookborough, and I wouldn't be at all surprised, even after their trips to and from the field here, if they don't do the town again when they get back. Marching with Enniskillen District are a Scottish flute band, the pride of the north from Glasgow. They are leading the biggest junior lodge in Fermanagh, the Fulton Memorial, number 151. Many of the lodges on parade today have suffered greatly in the troubles, having members murdered by the IRA, and this new banneret, which leads Florence Court District number 8, honours one such victim of terrorism. It's in memory of UDR soldier William Burley, who was blown up by a booby trap bomb planted in his car and was unfurled just two weeks ago by his widow Selina. At that ceremony, District Master Wilson Elliott paid tribute to the courage of Mrs. Burley and her family in their time of tragedy. Last of all in today's procession come the hosts, Brookborough District No. 3, and they too are parading a new banneret for the first time. It was presented by District Master Francis Evans, and the unfurling was performed just over a month ago by Lady Rosemary Brookborough, on the same night that Brookborough Pipe Band had new uniforms dedicated. And here is a portrait of that most famous of all Ulster men I mentioned a few moments ago, Sir Basil Brook, later Lord Brookborough, whose family name appears just about everywhere in this part of Fermanagh. Here he looks out on the celebrations of the day from the banner of Colebrook LOL No. 215, leading lodge of number three district, of which his grandson Alan now maintains the family's continuity of membership. And yet another victim of the troubles is honored in a new banner being paraded by Brookborough LOL number 736. It features a portrait of police reservist Ivan Crawford, murdered by the IRA while walking his beat in Inniskillen two years ago. Also on the banner is a portrait of the late Samuel MacDonald, master of the lodge for 30 years, and for some of that time, district master as well. The biggest demonstration outside Belfast was in Keady, and it had been surrounded by the most controversy. Nationalists had been calling for the County Armagh demonstration to be banned from the largely Catholic town, and there had been a threat to blockade the town's main street last night, but it did not materialise, and today's march passed off peacefully. Maria McCann reports. Early this morning, Keady was deserted, while local people in the mainly nationalist town stayed indoors. As tradition has it, the host lodge of Keady started today's celebrations of the Battle of the Boyne with the first march through the main street and around the town's cenotaph, avoiding the traditional route past a Catholic housing estate. But as the sun came out from behind the early morning clouds, so did the sightseers. Thousands lined the streets to watch the bands of marchers from the county's 11 districts. Euro MP Jim Nicholson, who's deputy grandmaster of LOL 88. His five sons play in the Cross Keys flute band. There's five of us.